Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is the second part of our word on the Great Exchange. And I do not have time to recap on everything we did on Sunday, but it is so important that you go listen to the Word of God, where we see how it started with Adam and Eve, and as they sinned, that everything changed. Their perspective about themselves, about God changed. We saw that no person can change themselves, that we need to be born from the seed of God. And then we saw that we need to apply the blood of Jesus within our lives. This is how we are saved. So the blood of Jesus means nothing within our lives unless we apply it. And now today, this is what we are exactly what we are going to do. We are going to appropriate, apply the blood of Jesus within our lives through the word of our confession. And we're going to start looking at the seven places where Jesus shed his blood for us. And the first of all is the blood of faithfulness. The Bible says that his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. And this happened in the garden of Gethsemane. Matthew 26 verse 39 says, O oh my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. So when we look at faithfulness, we see that faithfulness within our lives has got everything to do with our will. Even in Isaiah 14, we looked at the devil and he came and he said, I will ascend to heaven. I will exalt my throne. I will sit on the mount of the congregation. I will be like the most high God. So we see even Eve, she chooses her will above the will of God. And that is what we find in sin. Everything is to do with I will. I don't care about anything or anyone else. It is what I want. My will, I shall. But when we look about to Jesus, we see in the garden of Gethsemane that Jesus said, not my will, Lord, but your will be done within my life. And even in the next verse, as we see when he went to his disciples that couldn't pray with him, and he said in verse 41, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. You see, for you and I to overcome and to become everything that God wants us to be, we need the blood of faithfulness within our lives. And therefore, today we're going to make the confession and you're going to make the confession with me over your life, appropriating the blood of Jesus in our lives today. And just where you are, say the following with me. Thank you, Lord, that all pride and stubbornness, and rebellion, and faithfulness, infidelity, disloyalty, dishonor, and selfishness is absorbed through the cross, and you replace it, exchange it with humility, and obedience, and faithfulness, loyalty, commitment, honor, and trustworthiness. I can't do this out of myself. I receive your faithfulness through the blood of Jesus. Secondly, Hallelujah. Let us look at the blood of redemption that gives us forgiveness and healing. And I want to tell you today, it is God's will for you to be forgiven. It is God's will for you to be healthy. Jesus paid the price and he carried all our sin. And Isaiah 53 verse 12 says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And therefore, you and I have redemption. So say with me, by the blood of Jesus, I am redeemed from the power of the enemy. Amen. So you don't have to pay. You don't need to be punished. The price has been paid. Secondly, by the blood of Jesus, we are forgiven. So say with me, by the blood of Jesus, I am forgiven of all my sin. So we also not just forgiven, but we also cleanse. The Bible says it. Say with me, by the blood of Jesus, I'm cleansed now and continually from all my sin. We are cleansed. This means that God is changing you and me continually. It doesn't just forgive us, but you know we are being changed and transformed on the inside continually. Isn't that amazing? Say with me, by the blood of Jesus, I'm justified and God sees me just as if I have never sinned. Isn't that incredible? God just thinks of our sin no more as far as the east is from the west. So far he has removed our transgressions from us. Now say with me, by the blood of Jesus, I'm sanctified, set apart for God's purpose. Now you see, these are the five confessions of the redemption of the blood of Jesus. I'm redeemed, forgiven, cleansed, justified and sanctified. 
And uh, so the Bible also, uh, we see that God wants to bring us healing. Healing in our hearts, healing in our bodies, healing in, in relationships. This is what the blood of Jesus does within our lives. And now make this confession with me. And, and we already read Isaiah 53 verse 12 that says uh, that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. So say with me, thank you Lord that your blood absorbs all sickness and disease, desire for unhealthy things, unhealthy habits, physical laziness, restlessness, stress and anxiety. And in replace and exchange, you give me health, a desire for healthy things, healthy habits, a desire for physical exercise, good sleep and peace. I receive it in Jesus name. Isn't that powerful? Now thirdly, I want to look at the blood of identity and we see that the beard of Jesus was pulled out of his face and his face was unrecognizable. It says in Isaiah 52 verse 14, the New Living Translation, uh, but many were amazed when they saw him. His face was so disfigured, he seemed hardly human and from his appearance one would scarcely know him as uh, was, that he was a man. And then in Isaiah 50 verse 6, also New Living Translation, it says, I offered my back to those who beat me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mockery and spitting. So Jesus took all the rejection on him. The Bible says that he was so disfigured that you could not recognize him as a man. And, and, and that is his identity, so that your identity and my identity in God can be restored. And through the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, through the blood of Jesus, now our identity is restored. And, and, and now we can say therefore, so say with me, thank you Lord, all self-consciousness, all sensitivity to opinions, all fear of man, rejection, inadequacy, insecurity and low self-esteem is absorbed through your blood. And you replace it with a God consciousness, a sensitivity to your Holy Spirit, a fear of God, acceptance, confidence, complete security, healthy esteem in Jesus Christ. Thank you Lord that this is made possible through your blood. Number four, let's continue to the next confession. And this is the blood of conquest, where we see the crown of thorns on the head of Jesus in Matthew 27 verse 29, when they had twisted a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Now, we see that the thorns represent the curse uh, on the earth. Uh, Genesis 3 verse 17 says, Curse is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread. Till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. So the earth is cursed. The workplace is cursed. The work environment is a cursed environment. But you and I sanctified through the blood of Jesus. Because in Genesis 1 verse 16 God gives us the original blessing where he says be fruitful multiply fill the earth subdue it have dominion over all and that is god's will for our lives so god's will for you is to prosper he says in deuteronomy 28 verse 18 and you shall remember the lord your god for it is he who gives you power to get wealth so who is your source God is your source. So we need to keep our eyes on our source, which is God. And that's why there are many people that have wealth, but they have sorrow. They have success, but they have sorrow. God says, no, I will give you the ability to attain wealth. And when I give it, I add no sorrow to it. And we also know that when he gives it, it's not for us to look good or to say, well, I am successful, you know. God establishes a covenant. He says in verse 18, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he saw to your fathers, as it is this day. A covenant of generosity, a covenant of love, a covenant whereby you and I lay our lives down so that we can be a blessing to others. So say with me, thank you, Lord, that through your blood, all my fear, anxiety and worry, unbelief, poverty, failure, lack and struggle is absorbed through your blood. And it is replaced with faith 
and confidence, conquest, prosperity, victory, and overcoming all through the blood of conquest. Hallelujah. Let's go to number five, the fifth place where Jesus shed his blood. And this is the blood of productivity and we see it in his hands. Psalm 22 verse 16 says, They pierce my hands and my feet. And the problem is that we have unredeemed hands. Isaiah 59 verse 3 says, For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. So many of us have lazy hands, procrastinating hands, we have mediocre hands, we have hands that hold idols, we have hands that take bribes, that steals, that are unjust, right, and that kills. And now, but through the blood of Jesus, our hands can be redeemed, our hands can be creative, our hands can be loving hands, our hands can be hands that save and rescue, rather than, than hurting, it can heal, rather than, than destroying, our, our hands can build marriages and houses and communities, and therefore say the following with me. Thank you, Lord, that through your blood, all laziness, mediocrity, lack of follow-through, of going through the motions, procrastination, sloppiness, cruelty, violence, injustice, being stingy, all of that is absorbed through the blood of Jesus Christ. And in exchange, we receive hands, uh, that good work ethics, we receive excellence, diligence, uh, creativity, promptness, neatness, compassion, tenderness, justice, servanthood, and generosity. Thank you, Lord, that through your blood I receive productivity. Hallelujah. The sixth place where Jesus shed his blood is on his feet, the blood of purpose. And Isaiah 52 verse 7 says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. So purpose always means you are initiating. You are the one that is going. Romans 10 verse 14 says, How then shall they call on him? Uh, on, in whom will they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So everyone of us has got a responsibility to initiate love, to initiate encouragement, to initiate of building a bridge and standing in the gap. And therefore, I want you to say with me today, thank you, Lord, that your blood absorbs all ignorance, confusion, distraction, excuses, limits, and fears, frustration, good intentions, bad reactions, and you replace it, Lord, with revelation, conviction, focus, progress, faith, faithfulness, fruitfulness, and guarded purpose. Thank you, Lord, that I know there is a reason I am alive, and that is to fulfill your godly mandate, your godly purpose. And lastly, the seventh place where Jesus shed his blood, the blood of restoration, John 19 verse 34 says, But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. Why? Because his heart was broken, the blood and the water were separated. And when we talk about pressing a spear into somebody's side, we're talking about a closeness, we're talking about a vulnerability, about an intimacy where you have allowed yourself to be vulnerable, where you have given yourself, where you have been transparent, where you have been vulnerable, and what happened? You've experienced hurts and pain. And, and now you say, I trust nobody. You don't even trust your children or your spouse. And what happened is the blood was, um, was pressed and, through and speared through his side. And he lost all energy. All the energy flowed out of him. And this is what happens when you and I are hurt. Our energy. We just lose our energy with this hurt. We just want to give up. We lose our hope. We lose our strength. But today I want to tell you, God wants to help you. He wants to heal you. He wants to heal your hurt. He wants to heal your heart, your marriage, restore your relationship with your children. So therefore, say with me the following confession. Thank you, Lord, that through your blood, all deep hurt, separation, disappointment, discouragement, and depression is absorbed through the blood of Jesus. And in exchange, I receive a complete heart. Total restoration, compassion that love, hope, encouragement, and joy by the blood of Jesus, our Lord Christ. And therefore they overcame by the blood of the Lamb. Revelation 12 verse 11 says, And the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. They were not afraid to die. Why? Because they were complete in Christ. They, they trusted God completely through the blood of Jesus. 
you and I receive our breakthrough. And therefore, Romans 8.31 says, What then shall we say of these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against the elect of God? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, also making intercession for us. For who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors, through Christ who loves us. Why do we conquer? Because of the blood of Jesus. And the power of the blood is available to you now. You've got to take it. You've got to apply it. You have to put your faith in it. The work is not 50 or 80%. The work that Christ did is 100%. Whatever you need within your life has been provided for you through the blood of Jesus. So therefore, we can't just serve God any old way. We are not just adding Him to our lifestyle. No, God has to become our life and say, Lord, I give you my whole life in exchange for what you've done for me in the cross. And just where you are, let us pray together. Our Father, thank you for all these confessions we have made. Father, as we're having our communion, taking the bread and taking the grape juice as a, as a symbol of, of rem and as remembering of what God has done for us. Thank you that through it, that the work is complete, that we can be whole in every area, in every part of our lives, that we can be successful, that we can lay our life down, that we can never lose because of the blood of Jesus within our lives. Lord, I pray for everyone that has watched this word and listened to this word today, that they will become whole and complete through this word, through their faith in the blood of Jesus, that their lives will never be the same as they receive what you have done for them, the complete work on the cross of Calvary. And we thank you for that today in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Go and walk in your victory and in your breakthrough through the blood of Jesus. God bless you.